Hey, welcome back to JMT Saves Cars, and thank you for watching the Mighty Cat series, where today we'll be hanging out with said machine. In the previous episode, we uh, convinced it to come inside for repairs. It was a little bit reluctant, but in the end, we prevailed through persuasion of heavy objects with a single human being. There's a lot that a person can do by themselves with the right tools and the right attitude. First, I'd like to give you some perspective of how far this machine's already come. Take a look at this picture. This was as found. I bet you guys out there are the same way. Just can't get enough of, you know, seeing stuff that hasn't worked in years come back to life. Uh oh. So I was born somewhere around there. This little machine's got stories to tell. Hello. Welcome. This has got to be the first time that this machine has ever been indoors. I know it's at least the first time in my lifetime. If this machine could talk, it would have some stories to tell. It's hard to say where to start on a project like this. There's a lot to do. Somebody's got to do it. It'd be such a waste just to... Uh, see it disappear or get to any worse shape. So, I know that I need this blade off. It's not gonna be in need of it anytime soon. So, I'm thinking this bolt, it's really a pin, but that's the first order of business. Get that link free. And then, these bolts, they go straight through. And we're gonna see, with the power of technology, if the inductive heater can make life easier. I'm gonna find a fit over there. You're already interested. This is made by Bolt Buster. I've had this tool in constant use for a little over uh, three years and it has not let me down yet. Not cheap. But nothing good is. Let me show you how fast it'll heat this.
the pie thing that I've got to turn the 2000s. This thing's just coming out. Washers, like brand new. All right. So, that's the process. Whole lot of that going on. Just like that. Just start with that. It always just blows my mind. Stuff made in the 40s. It'll just break free. And even though the stuff looks like it's absolute garbage. No way. That's moving. I'm watching the nut at the bottom. That bolt is moving. I mean, that bolt has not... Can you see that? If you don't believe me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put vice grips on this. That bolt has not moved, I would say, probably since 1940-something. That is... It's blowing my mind right now. It shouldn't be, though, because I work on stuff like this for a reason. Because you can fix it. So, let's go a little bit... A little bit more. This 
Gonna get an intro again. A lot of work and stuff back and forth. I know what's going on here, it's the, uh, the Class E Volt. I'm more than likely damaged. I'm having them in the, the way of dirt and such. See, what I'll have to do here, I'm going to have to cut the bolt off. But, just the fact that it's moving, it should be able to come out. Yeah, just work on the next one. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is what I would call good and tight. We're just gonna, we're gonna give that one a minute to think about it. This stuff right here, made by Lucas, is, it's really good. I mean, I haven't tasted it, but it sure works, works wonders on stuck stuff, and it smells great. But let's face it, if it doesn't smell good when you're using it, well, it's not as enjoyable. And it kind of sizzles on there. Listen. That's how you know it's good. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a lot of penetrating oil going on. That's amazing, though. Gotta love steel from the 40s. It just doesn't care about time. Ahead and I pulled those bolts out, pulled the grease fitting out. There they are. One had grease, the other didn't. But those just slid out of that four inch channel after all those years. The goal at this moment is to get the blade and the arms off. So I'm gonna to head to the other side and I'm gonna record non-stop on the other side and repeat the same process. All right, that's it. The gloves are off. 
But once these gloves go on, I'm gonna just go at it. The only difference on this side is that these have not been touched other than just spraying penetrant on them. the Lucas brand like I showed last. So we're gonna give it a shot without any without any heat and just see. Okay. Told you it's good stuff. This thing is flying right off. Now back it up. Unbelievable. Washer. Not. See, this is just like the other side. This one's got grease. Now this one, if it's anything like the other side, will not have any grease and may present an issue. <clears throat> That's moving. And the bolt. Look at that. You can't even make this up. You see that? That bolt's as shiny as the day it was when it was new. And there's nothing sealing this. I'm telling you this. This machine wants to live. There's a washer. Uh-oh. There are first casualty. That washer's gonna have to be replaced. Such is life. Not even a challenge. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna reposition the camera, but I'm not gonna stop. Select the weapon.
I can't hide them. I'm gonna hide them. You're free. Look at that thing. It's brand new. On this side actually this side actually shows a little bit of tiny bit of wear but for a joint that has absolutely no grease besides the kind you put on it there's no wear look at this up and down maybe a sixteenth of an inch all right this blade is ready to come off. How did we do it for time? 10 minutes. Perfect. Cheers, friend. Well, I celebrated too soon. Yeah, their grease fitting needs to come out. All right, now we're done. Well, I guess this is the point where uh, we find out what happens. Got some pieces of wood down there to catch its fall. Well, there it is. No longer a bulldozer. Now it's actually a crawler tractor.
this blade is pretty serious for its size. It's like a half inch thick bottom edge on it. And it's in remarkable shape considering how long it sat in the earth. Cool. Well, this lower radiator hose is for sure going to be replaced and so is the upper. But I guess at this point in time is when I find out if it has any coolant in it. Yeah, answer is no. Nope, the answer is yes. We'll just put that in there. And I have to find a pan to catch that. Oh, bright green coolant. Who would think? On weight dramatic effect. <laughs> How deep is the snow where you live? <laughs> How many years of acorn accumulation do you think? How many generations of squirrel do you think that took? Um, you got leaves there. That's that's a lot. Is there anything still living in here? <laughs> Hello. Somehow the oil can still is holding well. Oh, there's my keys. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What are you? Oh, that's a brand new leaf. That is a brand new leaf. It never even saw sunlight. <laughs> wow, this is this is impressively impressing impressively disgusting. <laughs> my eighty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the drain. <laughs> nice convenient spot. You don't even have to cut your hoses. Yeah, there's a bolt right there. Under this mountain of acorns. Ah, now it got the smell. Part of the last job it did. <laughs> yeah, so that's three quarter inch. What do you think it'll just turn? Yes. Just preserve a acorn. Maybe that'll be the thumbnail. Should get the world's strongest man to come bench press a uh, bulldozer. <laughs> First time ever. Yeah. Why would that be seized? However, I don't think we're going to be able to reach the other side. Well. Anyways, we'll call it a day.
Thank you. I'll be here. Well, here's my first little bulldozer I had when I was a kid. And welcome to the second part. Battle of the Bolts. So I'm going to say that somewhere around here is about the year 2000. And as we go back in time, I would say somewhere around here is about 1980. So I was born somewhere around there. This side's not as deep, but still. Those are fully decomposed. It takes a long time for an acorn to really break down. So the reason that had to come off is I need to remove that nut. Then the whole radiator can come off. All right, it's story time. Cheers. I gotta go after this, uh, this nut on the bottom of the radiator. And as I do so, I'm gonna try and fill in the blanks here. So since I made that first video of dragging this in here, I'll briefly say that I could have easily done that with anything other than just my own two feet. But I didn't because I wanted to show all the different ways of manipulating heavy objects when you don't have anybody to help you. I, um, I've been at this mechanical stuff since I was really young seven, eight years old, I was just doing anything I could to try and work on things and um, understand machines because it just didn't make any sense to me how this engine thing, you can't see anything working, but it makes all this heat and it makes the car move and I had to know, I had to know what was in there. So long story short, I, um, I've developed kind of the attitude of you can get anything done if you try hard enough, and usually that's right. So I've always been attracted to very difficult projects, seemingly impossible restorations, and just um, can't get enough of it. And uh, I bet you guys out there are the same way, just can't get enough of you know, seeing stuff that hasn't worked in years come back to life. Because we're, we're the only ones that can help these things. You know, you were, you were sitting there for 35 years, maybe more. And look at what you did. Nothing. Just sat there. 
Machines are nothing without people, and people are nothing without machines. We have a lot to owe to ourselves and the machines that we create. Um, with that said, the story time is going to be reflecting on the response of the first video I made on this uh, subject. Later on that night, after I had moved the machine, I just <whistles> dove into the rabbit hole of the internet and I wanted to uncover the, the mystery surrounding the Mighty Cat brand and what preceded it. And what I found was a website, an older website, that was documenting um, the Beetle tractor and the variants that were created before and after. And what I learned is that this, this is the end of the family tree of the Beetle tractor. And the Beetle tractor goes back to the 30s. I emailed the gentleman that wrote the, um, the website, it's 22 pages. I'll be posting a link in the description. It's a really good read. And it's amazing how this type of equipment was so, it was like the right thing at the right time because, um, how, what do they say? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So you know what I mean? They needed something, and when I mean they, I mean the Forestry and Park Service, the Army, um, they needed something that was real heavy duty, really compact, and weighed a certain amount, had certain dimensions, and could kind of be inserted to where it needed to be without having roads to get there. So what I'm pointing at is that these little machines, they were delivered to really remote places to do hard work, not having the ability to get big machines in there. Hence, the construction of this small machine being extremely robust and overbuilt. So the next morning, I received a phone call from the gentleman that wrote that website. And I had a great talk with him. It just lit him up to see somebody, you know, young like me in his eyes to be interested in something like this. He had gotten out of it years ago. He's uh, up in age. And um, it, it's up to people in our, you know, 20s, 30s to take an interest in stuff like this because this is pre-internet. And it, we're lucky that any of this is on the internet because the people that know about it, they're not making new websites. So moving forward, he connected me with a, uh, a fellow YouTuber, which I'll post a uh, link to um, his YouTube where you can see one of these machines working. Uh, he's over in New Jersey. He called me later on that day. And he was so kind to tell me that if I was to send him a flash drive and a little USB flash drive, that he would gift me the information that he has on his computer on these machines. He also told me that there's a database of all of the serial numbers that he's collected and identified. And now this machine is part of that. So that helped to kind of give a, uh, a range of when this machine was made. Now this serial number puts it definitely before 1954. So somewhere around 1952 is what we were thinking. That's really cool. I mean, it could be 49, it could be 50. It's very limited information. Well, as I go on in the subject, I'm gonna see what this uh, fastener has to say here. Odds are that it's going to 
Yeah, just turn. Why wouldn't it? All right, here's where the story gets rather interesting. So about six months ago, I would say about June, maybe July, there was a picture uh, sent to me by Ben. Ben has a, a towing company a um, couple, couple hundred yards away from here. And he has connections that, you know, they're throwing away stuff, bringing stuff to the scrapyard. So things pop up here and there. And sometimes they'll get thrown my direction like, hey, what is this? Or, hey, are you interested in trying to fix this? So a picture that sent to me of this machine sitting in the weeds. And I said, oh, that that's a, a really neat looking machine. But there was nothing to scale it by in the picture. And he said, it's really small. Thinks it's an international. I said, yeah, got to have that. So then I waited around while the truck and trailer brought this machine to this location. And when I first laid eyes on it, I couldn't believe the, the dimensions of the machine. And I said, I've never, I've never seen something like that before. And I've seen a lot of things. So I unloaded it and I'll put a picture here of uh, unloading it with Ben's giant pork man off-road pork truck and it makes it look like a toy so I didn't think you know too much of it at the time as far as like you know where did it come from what's the story on this I was just like this is a really cool machine and I want to try and get this working again so fast forward to now um, a couple days ago, I asked the, the guy that brought the machine here if he had contact information for the person that he got it from, and he did. So I placed a phone call, and I left a voicemail, and I said, this is, you know, so-and-so calling about this machine here, and I understand that it was possibly your father's. Do you have any information on it? Please call me back. Well, just this morning, Diane uh, called me back, and she was she was beside herself that this machine was being cared for and brought back from the dead. And that right there, my friends, is why I do this. It never gets old. You know, the connection through this machine to her... Um, her father, who's no longer with us. It's like, you remember people and you remember things they had. And, you know, she was telling me that he had this machine when she was little. And that was a long time ago. I asked if she had any pictures or could look for pictures of, you know, this machine back in the day and, you know, him using it or whatever so that I could get reference to what it looked like when he had it in good working condition any stories she said he used it all over the place and this was a, a thing that was near and dear to him and he uh, treasured it so this little machine's got stories to tell and um, I really look forward to seeing what she comes up with um, it's a local machine, just like I thought. It had only traveled about 30, 30 miles, 35 miles from where it was made originally. Um, we'll see what it turns up. But it's, it's just like that. Something like this can slip right through to the junk pile. And... For all intents and purposes, it is junk. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I don't really believe in things uh, 
being unrestorable. I just think that they become, you know, more difficult. That's incredible. I didn't even put any any juice on that. And it just came free. So that's the that's the story. I'm working on kind of developing a um, uh, somewhat collaboration of the history of these machines. And then I'm going to roll this restoration into kind of its story as well. And I hope you enjoy that. Leave a comment below as far as, you know, what makes you interested in this. Is it the, the sheer size of it? Is it the oddity? Is it my oddity? I don't know. I'm going to do this stuff whether it's filmed or not. I just enjoy being able to share it with other people that are interested in it. Because if I'm just sitting here, right, and I'm not filming anything, then it's only me having fun. But see, when I film it and I put it on YouTube and other people get to enjoy it, then it's really fun for me. So I hope you enjoy, and I think it's trying to try and see if this radiator will come out. Oh yeah. in remarkable condition. There we have it. We're into the, the meat of the machine now. Look at the radiator. It's in really, really nice shape. Big tubes in there. This is when stuff was just made to last forever. It's just, you can tell by the way it is. Well, I'm afraid there's no real great way of doing what I got to do next. I don't know. Maybe that will help. Uh, exceptionally disgusting no bodies found just a whole bunch of dirt and uh, decomposed acorns walnuts that sort of thing so I don't think there's anything more that I want to do and you want to see than this engine turn so Spoiler alert, I did put oil in the cylinders not that long after it appeared. And uh, it didn't take but maybe a week or so. And it broke free without much trouble at all. So not going to be a huge struggle here. Yeah, it still turns just as I suspected. But if I remember correctly, it like would stop at a certain point. And now it seems to not. And combine 
some tools here. Well, this is really good news. I thought it had a stuck valve. But apparently not. You can hear the oil gurgling in the cylinders. My best guess is that all of the valves that have gone up are now stuck up. The squealing noise you hear is the, the generator. Not super thrilled about turning. I think we'll give it a new belt. Well, that is just great. I think I know what time it is. I think it's time to drain the oil and see what is in there. All right, that is the drain plug. It appears to be a, that looks like a half inch drive. And go figure, it's full of dirt. Definitely, definitely half been stride. All right, let me get a extension and we'll see if that'll come out. First oil change in my lifetime and uh-oh. Hands. All right, now we're going to go for it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, that's the wrong color oil. It's very clean water, though. Starting to get. Well, that's not the worst. It's like barely any water for having sat that long outdoors. There's no coolant in it. Oh, good news. It's not nice stuff well past its oil change interval, I'd say. I think we're just gonna let that drain for the next day or two. I was getting scared for a second there with all that water coming out. But really, that was just, that's nothing. It wasn't even rusty water. All right, well, if somebody could just press the button on the camera to uh, stop recording, that would be great. Anybody guess what the next step is gonna be here? I'm just gonna go ahead and admit right now, the cylinder head is coming off. What do you think the chances are? I've put some oil on here. No heat applied. Oh yeah. 
right out. As we watch uh, all these bolts get loosened up here, I'd like to take a second and thank everyone for making it this far. I know an hour is a long time to sit and watch a uh, guy like me do stuff like this, but I'm telling you, it, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think that this little project is just too too special to not share with the uh, greater audience. Over the last uh, year and a half, two years, I've put a lot of effort into this YouTube channel and it's been quite rewarding. However, I don't really make any money from it. It does make me feel, you know, a greater motivation to uh, continue on what I'm doing as I, I work alone these days and it can be, um, you know, it can be a little bit, you know, boring, kind of go crazy talking to yourself. So I'd much rather talk to you guys and uh, share what I'm doing. And it kind of brings me back to my roots and I venture into kind of crazy projects like this for my own entertainment and uh, just to exercise the possibilities of mechanical repair. Because let's face it, I wouldn't be doing something like this for a customer because it just wouldn't make any sense. Hence the reason that things like this get thrown away. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, leave a comment. Click that notification bell to uh, know when I post a new video. And if you like this content and the other stuff that I've posted, if you have or haven't checked it out, please consider subscribing. Um, the channel has grown greatly. And I am uh, looking forward to this new year. I will be uh, making a bunch of videos on various topics. And you never know what I might come up with. Thanks. All right, well, that was, that was barely even a challenge. And the uh, cylinder head is ready to come off. I'm going to quickly vacuum up some of the... Well, initial thoughts are real good. Real, real good. All right, I, I know, I know this looks bad. And it is bad. But it's really good. Look at the cylinder. What? Well, that's, I mean, that's two. Can we have a look at the others? Sure. 
Yeah, why wouldn't they be perfect? Holy moly. We may have a running engine on our hands. Not that I had any doubt. Oh, that's just magical. Wait a minute. We got moving valves. But holy crap, here we go. All the bolts out, four good cylinders. All the valves are there. There's hope, there is major hope here. Definitely ready to go, friends. More than I haven't breathed a bunch before. It smells like the seventies. Exhaust valves. All the intake valves are good. Anytime an intake valve is open, I can tap on the exhaust. okay all we got is time that's all we got for today as far as time i'm gonna go home and get some rest well that's a real good start i mean i could be sitting here with five bolts broken off in the in the block and heads stuck on there and we're not just got four stuck exhaust valves that's not bad could be a seized engine, but it's not. And it's amazing for the fact that the exhaust was rotted off of it. And it's not seized, and the cylinders are nice. Well, this is promising. So I hope you'll continue on watching the journey of this machine and me struggle to fix it. <laughs>